Hello, young man. Hello, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too so bad. You've changed your backdrop, if that's not a virtual backdrop. Oh, yes, it's a virtual backdrop with a, a light switch in the background. Okay. <laughs> to make it authentic. Oh, yes. yes. So you've moved, you've moved somewhere else to, um, in, in Piper Towers. Yes, I'm, in, I'm hiding out in the kitchen. Um, and uh, Actually, Doug's over there as well, if you want to see him. Hey, Doug, how's it going? Good to see you. First time I've seen Doug. Is that? Is it really? Yeah. 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 He's, uh, yeah, well, we, we, we've got new neighbours and they like to drill. So um, I'm hiding in here. Really? I wonder what they're drilling for. Oil, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's Stansted Abbots. It's, it's a well-known, uh, you know, place to go drilling. No, that that they they move well. They actually they haven't actually moved in. They're just um, they're preparing the place before they right. move in. Yeah. And um, there was an elderly gentleman who was the perfect neighbour who lived there before, right. who because he was deaf as a post. Yeah. And he used to go in and just take his hearing aid out. Which is probably just as well living next door to us now with the dog and with a baby when when Salem was little screaming, um, but now of course like you know the place was he got ill last year and went into a care home, and the place was empty for about a year, and not much has been done to it for quite a long time. So I guess there's, and I think they keep finding problems, right. things that require right. drilling and hammering anyway. They're, they're ever so nice, but you know. It's, yeah. We've been spoiled by having nobody living next, and it, it's at the side that we're semi-detached. It's the side that we're attached. So yeah. Right, but and is it is it at odd hours or is it is it reasonable hours? Uh, it's all day. Yeah. And then because they have people in doing work during the day, and then the husband comes home and does stuff in the evening, and he and you know what it's like. I, I don't know. Have you, have you ever do? Have you ever? Are you a DIY enthusiast, Graham? Um. You know what? Not since since I stopped being an air conditioning engineer. But when I cool. when when I first got accepted to go to radio school, I quickly realised we couldn't afford the flat we were renting in Sydney. Uh. I think we were paying. It sounds really cheap now. We were paying two hundred and thirty dollars a week Australian. What's and that? In? Could, I don't know. Probably Roughly. about. I don't know. Probably. But I think it's two for one at the minute. So about one two okay. five or something a week. Yeah. Because yeah. it was weekly you paid it there. Anyway, so, and uh, we couldn't afford that. So we found one for 160, which was a one bedroom in a place called Lane Cove. Because it wasn't yeah. on the train line because it was cheap and everything. So I could go to radio school for six months. And when we moved in, we had a washer dryer that wouldn't fit in the laundry. So I hung it on the wall in the little tiny laundry above the washing machine. And I, and I hung it upside down so the buttons would be at the bottom even though the buttons were upside down, if I'd put it, if I'd hung it on the wall the right way up, you'd never, the, the buttons, had, you'd need yeah, a step ladder to, because it was, it was a tiny flat and we needed to save space. And I remember like drilling, we didn't get permission or anything. And I could have drilled, drilled into plumbing or, or wiring or anything and hanging a bracket, putting a bracket up and hanging that on. And then, <laughs> and this is the mad thing, which I can't believe I did. I was in a hurry to get set up. And it had a thing yeah. like the living room had like one PowerPoint <laughs> for the whole. God. Mind you, it was a living room, dining room, kitchen. It was a living oh, okay. room, dining room, kitchen and one bedroom and the toilet was off the bedroom. And that was it. It was two rooms. <laughs> it's, it's tiny flat. Was there a door for the toilet? Or was it just in the There was a door room? for the toilet. Yeah. But if somebody well, came round, if they wanted to go to the toilet, they'd have to go through the bedroom. That's weird. <laughs> to the toilet. It? Anyway. And I can remember this one PowerPoint in the living room was like nowhere near enough. And I had a, a block with four outlets on it that I could put on the wall that would fit in the space where the one was. And so, and I couldn't find the fuse box. And I was in a hurry and I didn't want to get onto the landlord because I knew it would take ages. And yeah. then they might still yeah. say, you can't do electrical work. You know, we need yeah. to get somebody in and we'll charge you money. That's to hell with it. And I worked on it live. I installed oh the PowerPoint God. with the juice live. Um, but the thing is, I was air conditioning engineer. So often I would have panels off big sets up to like 415 volts with it, with it all yeah. live while I was 
testing where the juice was going to to work out why the compressor wasn't turning or the fan motor was is the power to it and whatever so i was used to but i wasn't yeah. used to you know putting why it's you know connecting things up while it was live no but that's just madness because the thing is if i'd made a mistake which could have been easy if, if a screwdriver the end of the screw the screwdriver is all insulated and everything but if the end of the screwdriver had touched like the metal box inside while it was live it would have shorted out and the fuse would have gone and i didn't know where the fuse box was we would have lost no. everything for who knows how long and then i would have had to yeah. cover my tracks you know, ringing the landlord yeah, saying, i don't yeah. know what's gone on bloody fuses we've lost all the yeah. but yeah no so it's probably best i stay away from that kind of work <laughs> yeah yeah i i tend to well i don't have no idea i'm for, I, I, i'm a feminist and i'd love to be able to do all these things but unfortunately I, i'm no good at it so yeah I don't think you need to get some... we got somebody in to literally when we moved in here to literally hang paintings up we got somebody in hey. yeah so that's how that's but we own this so we don't yeah, really mess this. in a rental well, i'm like friend. get the drill <laughs> but yeah. like in... <laughs> don't mess up your own place yeah certainly not no yeah it was no, brand new not. as well so we didn't want to you know we really didn't want to bugger it up yeah no but then as well you know it's always hard to get them straight isn't it you go left a bit <laughs> right a bit down a bit up a bit yeah we got to put a shelf in the there's a laundry room here. There's a laundry cupboard here. As you come in the oh. front door, there's a giant cupboard and a washer dryer in there. But we yeah. needed a shelf in there to, to make more use of it. We got them put a shelf in there. Oh, and we got them. We did a great job. Actually, I think I can show you, Ooh. bizarrely enough, because Ooh. when you mentioned, um, you mentioned how Stellan thought I was on the toilet for some reason. <laughs> which I'm sure we'll cover in a bit. Um, yes. I thought, well, wouldn't it be funny if I pretended to be on the toilet during our Zoom chat? So I took a picture of our bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh, it's nice. It's but really I don't know nice, if you though. can see, I don't know if you can see top left. So if I point like, uh, no, I've got to. Yeah, the flush. I'm in back. Hang on, hang on. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Right, see see there see yeah that's a, that's a cupboard one of those fancy glass ones yeah well it wasn't that was just a shelf oh so we got a guy in to make that you can't really see it because i don't but that's like a just two mirrors doors Ooh. so and we did that in the other bathroom as well so that yeah. worked out great oh, nice. so, so we, yeah so we did we did get people we did get people in to do stuff important stuff yeah. even the the hook that hangs my guitar on the wall or used to till i moved into the wardrobe here yeah um i used to have a guitar hanging up by my office desk but i got them to put the bracket up to hang i that. think i remember it... seeing that yeah yeah so yeah i get people in now well <laughs> I, I, I did when it was earning a regular paycheck <laughs> and you, you could allow when you could allow people in the house as well yeah our windows are filthy because my husband won't let um, poor old Vince, who's a window cleaner, come in the house. He's only what done the front. In? No. No, I think it's mainly just because he turned... You know what window cleaners are like? They just they don't tell you when they come in, do they? just turn up and he turned Actually, up Actually, they don't normally do the inside, do they? Isn't that a special... I thing? get them to do... I sometimes get them to do the inside. I well, just because you if you have that. a... You can. We have to pay twice as much, but... Um, if you have a four-year-old who enjoys putting their, their hands all over the windows as well, it's... Well, you see that when, when I was selling our old house, I used to get um, I used to get the window cleaner to come in and do the inside because I, I, I try and fail. I, can't, I just can't clean it myself. I just get it, get smears all over it. So. Yeah. I said, it's, always been very, it's all very domestic so far this morning, isn't it? It has. I don't know how we got onto this. No. Oh, oh, we talked about next door's drilling. That's what got Yes. Into. Yeah, so I'm hiding out in the kitchen because I can shut the doors around. There was a little bit of it's. It has got better. I have got a noisy pug as well. He's barking, but um, probably complaining. He's been complaining a lot. Ralph, he's been complaining about the DIY a lot as well. Uh. Um, well, work. It's not really DIY, I suppose, really. But but yeah, I can shut the doors, and then we're kind of a room a room away from it, if you like. Yeah. The good thing is because of your mic setup, it's not that echoey at all. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. So that that uh, close-up mic is working a treat. 
so many people you oh, see on relate. Zoom and it's just like you can hardly hear them because it's so echoey. Think, for yeah. sake, move to a quieter room or get a decent mic. Oh, no. I did an in interview a few weeks ago with a lovely guy who runs our local pub and I, I thought it was my headphones that were playing up and I should have stopped it halfway through because it was i could barely hear him and then when i listened to it i just couldn't use any of it, use I, wrote, it. I wrote it up instead but i yeah. felt really bad because it was a quite a funny interview as well he's really funny but yeah so he was using the mic on the computer <laughs> yeah and it was it was yeah. really bad. If he'd, even if he'd used um a usb mic because it'd be closer to him it would have been yeah. better so all he got to yeah. do is get closer up exactly that's why i like this mic because this mic's not it's it's really not that sensitive. I mean, I've even opened the window in the traffic going past, and I bet you can't hear it. No, really. Yeah, I you've can't got hear to be quite because no. you, usually you work you work these like about that close. But I'm just leaning yeah. back. But yeah, they only what they're really good, and from behind this, it's almost nothing. And uh, it's the same mic. I don't know if I told you, it's the same make and brand of mic we, we used in Australia on Two Go, the radio station there. Uh, but in Britain, they tend to use these condenser mics, which pick up everything, and they're yeah, terrible yeah. for radio. Are you saying that they do? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. They're all, they're they're built for high end sound treated recording studios where the artist goes in the booth and they're left alone in there. But in radio, you've got the studio doors always open. People are coming in. Salespeople are seeing. Have you got the copy for that such and such script? Yeah, yeah. Fine. But often they're walking when the mics open, and you're and you're doing stuff. You're clicking a mouse. You're using a keyboard. You're pulling faders and stuff radio studios are not um i was asked to recommend mics for home recording by an irish guy called nails recently. nails yeah really? nails mahoney he's a That's he's great a, he's, he's a radio consultant he's, he's a jock who's worked on so many stations uh, in canada and ireland uk and mm -hmm. he, he he runs a a, th a coaching thing for people and he realized yeah. that with covid a lot of people have you know, putting home studios in so they can continue to work. And he asked a load of people about um, my, what micro, what microphones they recommend for a home yeah. studio. And I basically put in there, condenser microphones have no business in a radio studio. And he like he thought that was quite funny. But I meant it. Yeah, yeah. But Australia's got it right. Britain's got it wrong. But we've yeah, got this we've right. got this mad thing in Britain that if it's British, that it's best. Yes. And it's really yeah. not always true. It's like, for instance, the NHS, the third rail. Touch the NHS, moan about the NHS, and you die. Yes. It's like it's the third rail on the railway. You touch that rail, you die. Yes. Um, and the I NHS, can see the news tightening around your neck as we speak. Well, the, the <laughs> NHS, uh, and from my experience of, with this oh, eye thing, yeah, how's um, that going? the NHS is rubbish. And really? it really is. Well, we all want it to be great. And yeah. everybody says, oh, it's the best in the world. And it's, well, how do you know that? Have you lived in Australia or New Zealand like I have? But, you know, Canada has a really good health service. Cuba has a really good health service. Ooh, Germany really? and France spend more per person on their national versions of national health than Britain does. They don't have... Our air ambulance is funded by charity donations. Ridiculous, France and Germany, really? it's funded out of the tax. You know, yeah. it's not, the NHS, it's okay. It, it's okay. It's not bad. It's no. okay. But it's not the best by a no. long shot. It no. really isn't. But people seem to think, because it's British, it must be the best. You just yeah. really can't say that to anyone because they just won't have it, even though no, they've no experience the street, of it anyway. Graham. No, it's a, I know. I mean, it's a You're lot. You're a marked man now for I know. saying this, you know. It's a lot better. Look, it's a lot better than a lot of places. You know, yeah. Central America, Africa, parts of Asia. Awful. And don't get started on um, the American model, which is just awful. It's just a token fake. So it's better than a lot, yeah. but there are a lot better than it. And we need to yeah. admit that. And if we keep saying that it's the best, well, then no one will pay any attention to sorting it out. And, and the other thing that's, no. you know, with the, this, this I hat thing happening, I'm doing an audio book at the moment. For, yeah, you said that you've done about 15 of them or something, haven't you? I mean, I'm working on three at the moment. I've got, I've got four for sale. I've got two ready to go on sale that have been submitted and I'm yeah. working on three. The one that I'm working on and is the most, it's the most challenging audio book I've ever done. However, yeah. I think it could, if it comes out all right, and I seriously mean this now, I think it could be the impo most important work 
I've ever done. Not just audiobooks. Work. Really? Most important work I've ever done. Really? Wow. It's a guy called Tom Bell. And he wrote the book. And he it's his voice. So I have yeah. to become him. Yeah. I have to talk as him. And so naturally, he's very fussy. It's 11 and a half hours long. Gosh, it's long. And already chapter three and chapter six, I've had to re-record again from scratch. Wow. Track, uh, track six, I re-recorded with him on Zoom, directing me exactly <laughs> how he wanted it. Because the story is phenomenal. It's his real life story of he had a sister who became mentally ill and was a, an inpatient at a mental health hospital in Cumbria where he's from. Yeah. And it's horrific. One of the male nurses was having sex with her. Oh no. She got pregnant and oh, had an God. abortion. Oh. And they didn't find out for something like 10 years. Oh that is that's because so sad. Because she confided Alison yeah. Oh, and then she committed suicide by throwing herself in front of a train. Oh, no. So, obviously, it's a very personal story to him. But they didn't find out for ten years. His mother was. His mother went off with one of these evangelical con artist churches. Oh. Yeah. And she thought when Y two K was coming, it was going to be the beginning of the rapture and the end of times. You know, <laughs> the end time. <laughs> So she thought she was going to die. So she yeah. confided in, in Tom and his sister yeah. what had happened because Alison, his, 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 uh, the sister who, who committed suicide, confided yeah. in his mother. And she kind of just said, oh, you know, this happened. And they had no idea. So he did some digging and loads of people knew, including the psychiatrist that was treating oh, her who no. signed the papers for the abortion and whatever. Oh. And that, so we got in touch with the police and the Crown Prosecution Service and, and they're all, they've and the NHS, and they've all, there's been a conspiracy to cover it all up and documents have gone missing. And it's been his quest for just, this book is his quest for justice and the story. It's, in, yeah. it's incredible. And when I, when I first recorded the 11 and a half hours, I'd have to keep stopping because I'd get quite emotional. And then, because I'm, because I'm him. Yeah. So yeah. I'm You've got to, to be completely. To, to make it work. And, and obviously yeah. chapter six, I didn't. And, and so I had to do chapter six. He kept saying to me, oh, can you do chapter six again? And I said to him, mate, I need to know exactly what you're feeling and whatever. So I said, look, I'll, I'll call you on Zoom and you can, while I'm recording it, you can coach me through and, and, and tell me how to get this right. And so, because the chapter six was all about Alison, it had a different vibe. Was the rest of it was the story and the tragedy and the quest for justice. Chapter six was just his memories of his sister, who he loved. You know, so it was a different vibe, and I'd got it wrong, and you know, we got it right in the end. I think he still got to check it. And so every every chapter, he sends me a critique of it, and I, so I've recorded all twenty three in the epilogue, and three Ow. and six I've done twice. Each one, he sends me detailed notes of what I need to fix up. And it's right down to, you need to pause here. <laughs> you know, you put an app yeah. or a the in there, or you left one out or whatever. And so really? each chapter maybe takes me a couple of hours to record. It takes me about that long again to fix up. So the amount of time this has taken is phenomenal. But as I say, if it comes out right, I think it'll be the most important work I've ever done. Mm -hmm ever so but it's a phenomenal story so i don't know why i was telling mm -hmm. you that oh yeah oh, but in it in it he um he 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 uncovers the failings of the nhs and what a totally corrupt organization it is you know because you had like these east was it east which which hospital was it east there's all these ever these scandals every now and again is it east mids or, uh, or east Hearts yeah or they, they, yeah they, constantly yeah. there are these because he ended up working for the NHS and he saw firsthand, uh -huh. this is just a coincidence, but he saw firsthand how the senior managers deal with situations and cover things up. And he eventually got fired because he was, he was too close to the truth. And just what yeah. a massively corrupt and bad organization the NHS is at the management levels.
just mm. terrible. So that hasn't helped. And it didn't help yesterday no. when I went in to get my eye examined. And my, you know, my appointment is at quarter past nine and it gets to 10 o'clock. And I went up to the desk and said, look, I've been here since nine. I've been here an hour now sitting. My appointment's supposed to be at quarter past nine. I was here at nine o'clock. I haven't been called yet. Oh, you should have been. Oh, oh yeah, sorry about that. They'd forgotten about me. And every oh. time I go, I go for a for them to check it. And now... At this stage, after I'd had three sets of eye surgery, and the system is, they, they work on it with the laser, and they say, come back in two weeks. And on one of them, they forgot to send me the appointment, and then they, they listed me down as did not attend, when I didn't know I even had an appointment. So no. that was on one of them. They're just useless. And, and uh, they, they forget about me yesterday. Every time I go in, they go to check it, and they go, oh, we missed a bit and I get more ice. I go in for a checkup and I, and I end up having eye surgery. That's happened four times. And once I went, I went to the big operating theater upstairs and had it like lying on my back and stuff. And so yesterday yeah. I went, I went, what's going on here? I said, every time I come here, you, I said, have you not done it right each time? Have you botched it each time and you have to keep fixing it? Or am I getting a new tear in the retina thing? Oh, yeah. and was like, you can see they're just covering their asses. And so they've made yeah. me an appointment for tomorrow now. I've got to go back at 10 o'clock to yeah. the main surgeon to have a look at it, the one who did the surgery yeah. upstairs. But he's worked on it. He's worked on it twice. And usually I, I go in, it's a different person. I've seen you know, four different surgeons have worked on it now. And they all look like, no. to me, they're patching up the mess the last guy's made. The, 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 NHS, days, yeah. the NHS is rubbish. So I'm sorry. It's rubbish. And, and reading this book has not helped. The timing of it's bad. And it's made me the way I am. <laughs> no. The, tr the truth may set you free, but it bloody hurts. <laughs> it, does. it sounds like quite literally a painful experience anyway. Yeah, for you. and the people who say the NHS is great, they're in blissful ignorance. They really are. Yeah. I mean, have you had an experience yeah. with them? Oh, many, many. Um, yeah, I mean, um, oh, well, what? I mean, I've had, I had, well, when, when I had Stellan, they were brilliant, actually, Princess Alexandra in Harlow. They were, I mean, I, I, my husband says, you were tortured because they kept up. I was in there for quite a few days being induced and then the inducements didn't work, induction didn't work. And then there was sort of, you know, to try and get you break your waters. And that was the mainly most painful experience I've ever had in my life. But they did a very good, the surgeon did a very good job of, I had a cesare emergency cesarean, they did a very good job. Uh, patching me up uh but yeah i've had you know the, the you, you you turn up and they or they, they they ring you up and tell you you've got an appointment and you haven't you haven't had a letter and you know, <laughs> yeah. you don't know anything about it because i've had vert i have vertigo and i've had that for quite a few years and i've had all sorts of investigations about it and they can't really find anything as to why but my poor dad he had a a a nice thing with his eye he um he's diabetic and he had bell's palsy and um, after he had the bell's palsy he had this weeping eye and then this sensation of grit in it constantly like really discomfort and he had about at least three different eye operations on it including one where they put a tiny piece of like gold chain in it until one day and none of it seemed to help until one day he had a uh, appointment with the opticians and the optician said, and this is this is in Northern Ireland now. Um, they said, you, "Do you realise you've got ingrowing um, eyelashes? We can pull them out for you." And actually, this was what the problem was the whole time. And they, and they missed it, and, it at the hospital, but they found it at the it optician. Entirely. They found it at like boots. I know the <laughs> yeah, yeah, spectators or something. I yeah, spe spectators. They, it, they, he could have avoided all these awful op ops and things that it it had. It just going in and you know they put whatever they used to pull it out, and so he has to go in every three months or something, and they they do it, and it's it still weeps, but it's so much better. The thing that like, I always hear about the NHS is oh, it's the, the people on the ground, they're fine, they're great, they're salt of the earth, they're brilliant. It's the people who are running it and the, uh, the admin and whatever. Now, yeah, from managers, reading Tom's they... book, they're absolutely right about the admin. But I have to question the people on the ground. Because, for instance, if you are an eye surgeon, which is a particularly specialized field, I would think. Very, yes. And you've got the choice of working for the NHS on whatever the NHS decide to pay you 
or working for a private organization where you could negotiate a salary based on your performance, where would you work if you were a really good eye surgeon? So I don't think they have got the best people. It's just no. from the economics of, of capitalism, of the society we live in, surely all the best people are working for private organizations but then a lot of them do do uh, pri private work as well as well they? they work i don't know three days at the nhs and then they do private oh, surgery okay okay that's All what right. they do a lot of the time i think but but no it's, it yeah 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 oh dear no yeah. so so yeah. i'll tell you i'll tell after tomorrow the good job we all have to go out in masks now isn't it well what's the <laughs> that conversation to, really well the she said, Julie woke, woke up this morning, she went, bloody Boris. And I went, what? She says, now we have to wear a mask if you want to go to the shops. Because yeah. Julie wear, works in a shop. Yes. So that means she'll have to wear a mask. I said, well, you better get us some masks then, because I might want to go to the stop and rob and, and get some chocolate buttons now and again. Which is usually my only trip out, apart from these trips to the hospital. And, is it uh, really? You've not been going out, Graham? I've got nowhere to go. Where, where, where am I going to go? Um... I go to I don't know. The, the stop and rob is next next door to the block the and stop flat. and block rob and, yeah <laughs> we've got two we've yeah. got two we've got the stop and rob which is next door which is pretty ordinary but the guy yeah. in there the guy in there's um he, he's all right he's a character pav and yeah uh, when we first moved in we fell out unfortunately because i was still on bob fm and oh, i was talking yeah. to chris hubbard once about the stop and rob we said this new flat oh, we've moved no. into, whatever. So he goes to me. I walked in there one day and he went, You're that bloke off the radio. And I went, Yeah. He says, I don't listen to it. Went, All right. And I thought, That's good. <laughs> and he went, Yeah, but my mate came in and said, You've been you've been dissing us on the air. And I went, I don't think so. He said, Yeah, you have I said, Oh yeah, I called you the stop and rock. <laughs> and uh free publicity yeah so i said sorry about that pav so from then on on bob a couple of times i called it the pav and save um <laughs> but uh yeah well he, he's all right but the, the shop i have to admit the shop's not he's better now since lockdown he's got a bit better stocked yeah but the better shop is a is a it's called a nicer which is basically like a half ass co-op and that's yeah, few, I know what you mean. That's a few blocks away, and that's got a post office in yeah. it. So sometimes I go there to get a few bits and pieces. But I mean, yeah. like, once a month. The stop and rob really? I might go to once a week. But the rest yeah. of the time, I'm just, I'm in here doing... You're these, in that, that box. I'm in this box recording audio books. I have the manuscripts on the screen, and I go for it, and... Uh, it's starting... July is, July is the month it should start paying. I mean, I've been at it since Yay. what March because March, yeah. I get my first royalty payment at the end of July from the from oh, the brilliant. royalty share books because I've I've changed tack on it now. I've now been going for books that pay per finished hour, and I did a kind oh, of a poetry brilliant. book last week, which was only a one hour book. Eee, really? And it, yeah, and it paid. Yeah. It paid a hundred US dollars an hour, but it was only an hour. But I got a hundred US yeah. dollars into my pay That's I right, got into pay to PayPal, yeah. And I've just taken on a cracker. Um, oh, yeah. which is called I wonder if I can say the title. I won't say the title in case it's there's some embargo or something. Yeah. And he's paying a hundred dollars per finished hour and it's oh. a seven hour book. Oh that's and, good. Um it's about time travel. Oh yeah and you can probably do in that from that box, can't you? It's yeah. like a TARDIS, isn't it? But he's got his, his time machine is, is is an iPhone app. And, oh, is uh, it? Yeah, and he's just travelled back to, in, in the first chapter, he travels back to 2001 and tries to stop 9-11 happening. And oh, I don't wow. know if he succeeds because I've only read the first chapter. Yeah. So I think he goes back in time and changes history. Um, and But I got I got stiffed. Did I tell you on the meditation book? I did a blog about it. I saw you were do I saw you were doing a med I think you said there was a meditation, there was a diet book or something. Oh, yeah. No, what happened with the, the meditation? The, the diet book is the bane of yeah. my life because that's the that's is the it? the diet book is the last pure royalty share 
hangover where you only get royalty because even Tom yeah. Bell's book is what you call royalty share plus where they pay you a little bit per finished hour not much but you get something for doing the book and then you get the royalty share as well so I think it's a great deal yeah. because a lot of authors they haven't got the money to pay you know 700 a thousand yeah. or two thousand dollars to get you to do a book but they can give you fifty dollars yeah. an hour plus a royalty share which is a great deal yeah. you get best of both worlds so he's but this this it's the, the diet book it's not the diet book I, I, I auditioned for a diet book and this is why I think it's a scam why? as well I mean you look really slim to me what? No, no, I, I auditioned for this diet book and the guy the guy messaged back and said actually we've made a mistake it's not that book it's this one would you like this one oh. instead and I went yeah whatever diet book diet book oh it's horrible yeah. It's horrible. Really? It's called the FODMAP diet. And it's for people. Oh, I with... know a little bit about that. Yeah. You do? It's for people with irritable yeah, yeah. bowel syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a book about that. But like the first half of it is all kind of medical terms and gastroenterologists and re really hard words about the body. Yeah. And the second half's bloody recipes. So it's all like Italian and French words. And I don't know your focaccia from your bloody oregano. I mean, it's just. It's all that and it's oh, recipes so it's this many grams of this and this many that it's just it's just it's horrible it's soul yeah, destroying drift difficult to read it I, so i've it been doing a little bit each day on that because i hate it it's um it's, i can't wait till it's finished but i think it's a scam because i got scammed on the i'll get back to the meditation i got scammed on the meditation book oh no so the meditation book i i auditioned for it and it said it was three and a half hours at seventy dollars an hour uh, okay so the bloke messaged me then and he said yeah he said it's uh it's it's 10 one hour meditations i thought and i looked at it and and the thing on acx said that the the amount of words accounts for three and a half hours worth of time so he says no it's 10 one hour meditations because there's lots of pauses in it so it comes oh. out at 10 hours Oh, well, 10 hours at $70 an hour, that's $700. Mm. And you can literally record one hour of meditation in an hour because I've got the fader here. And when it says like, you know, it says you go breathe, relax. And then it says like, stay silent for two minutes. You can pot down the fader. You can make a cup of tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come back while it's recording the silence. You can read ahead to the next bit, so you don't have. You know, you're not going to make a mistake. It wasn't yeah. that hard to do. So I no. I finished the first hour, and the first hour was something like forty eight minutes or something. And then the next one was about thirty eight minutes when I'd finished the next. And one of them, the last one of the ten, was like twenty eight minutes. So they weren't 10 hours each. I think it came, it came yeah. in just under seven hours with me padding it. Mm. So I s went on the site and I said, you know, this is done. Um, tell you what, here's what you owe me. You owe me $700 because it, it, it wasn't the 10 hours. It was uh, only um, just under seven. So I'm going to book seven. You owe me seven hours worth at whatever it was put this in my account and I'll click done and you're good to go. And he messaged back, I can't accept this. It has to be 10 hours. It has to be 10 one hour meditations. So I messaged him and said, mate, the manuscript's not long enough. The manuscript's only got three and a half hours in it. I've dragged it out to seven. I mean, yeah, you, you, you've done all right. Yeah, yeah. Now he says, and I thought, I smell a scam. What he's going to do is he's going to download all that audio I've put up and he can put out a meditation book called how to change your life in seven hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, all he has to do is, you know, is, is, you know, so quickly I took down all the audio. Yeah. Took it all off. And I noticed on the ACX site, he's put the exact same thing up. Three and a half hours worth of copy. He's put the exact same thing up. Uh, so he, it is a scam. And he didn't get the audio. No. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to get some other sucker to do it. Because that's what he's doing. Because he doesn't have to pay them then. You get all the, the voice work. You get yeah. seven hours worth of voice work for free. Yeah. And then you can sell it somehow. Obviously not through ACX. Some other way of selling it. 
as a, as an as a meditation audio book. You don't have to pay on because you oh I'm sorry because you cannot. And at one stage I uh, I tried going in the digital thing and slowing it down, and I managed to slow the first bit down without you being able to tell to an hour, and the second one nearly, but the th the, the last one 28 minutes I slowed that down. It sounded like I was drunk. <laughs> and I've put I've put that on YouTube so you can hear it. It's hilarious. To to that. <laughs> Relax and breathe deeply. Oh, cool. <laughs> so so that was a scam. So I'm wary of scams now. And and I've I've written to yeah. ACX and said, look, I think this is a scam. You need to check this out. And the same guys also put another one up, and it says oh, no. ten hours of kids' bedtime stories, and it shows the copy running for about four hours. So he's up to the same thing with that. So this but is. But then, how hour. on earth can you extend children's stories? You if can't. Not? I mean, you can't. So an unsuspecting rookie audiobook narrator like me comes along and goes, seventy dollars an hour, ten hours, great. And then they go, oh, it didn't run ten hours because that's only an estimate. Mm. And then you t and then they yeah. go, nope, can't accept it. And they've got this um, loophole to get no. out that they don't have to pay you on, but they can. They can download. They must have a way of downloading the audio. But he wasn't quick enough. I took it all no. down. Don't to hell Good. with it. Um, Good. So I'm really, and and I mentioned it in the blog. One of what he's really <laughs> stolen from me is not the seven hours worth of work which he stole from me. What he's stolen from me now is when I now get a a, a thing from ACX that says mm. you've been accepted to do an audio book. That was a real thrill. Oh great, I got one. Now I'm like, okay, let me check this guy out. So he's robbed that, you know, that euphoria. Yeah, you get that innocence. Because, yeah. Yeah. I don't get yeah. that anymore. I've lost no. that. And that was one of the great things about doing it was, was that. Yeah, yeah, so, I can imagine. So what I've done now is I've changed my tack. So now, like with this time travel guy, it's seven hours. And I said, look, this is how I work. Because you do a 15 minute test first and then they have to approve that and then you carry on and do the book. Yeah. So what I've said to him is once I've done the 15 minute test, I'm going to do the first hour and you're going to pay me for the first hour. And when that money's in my bank, then I'm going to do the first half of the book. When the first half of the book is, is done, you're going to pay me for that half. And when I've got that in the bank, then I'm going to finish the book. I think that's a and, really good And I might lose work that way, but... As I said to him in the email when I sent it to him, I'm going to do the work and put it on the site so you can check it. So at no mm -hmm. time am I asking you to pay anything up front before you haven't got and checked and approved the work. So I, I think that's the fairest way I can run it. You know, if I, you know, at the second stage when I put the first half, he'll have half the book. He can check it and he can tell me he wants to make any corrections. I wish I'd done that with Tom because I put. 23 chapters and an epilogue up before he started checking them if he was checking them as he went it would be much yeah i know it still takes the same amount of time but it just feel a lot less work. yeah but it, you're sort of learning as you go along aren't you really and i mean yeah. the book world i don't know about audio books but i know that the the book what my little experience the book publishing world is it is full of sharks and the wild west you know, yeah it I is didn't the know wild that. west I didn't know it's that. I got I, like that. I got one. I think that my because because I call this this method of get this getting you know one hour, half and then the full book. I call it my scam filter, and I yeah. think my scam filter actually caught one. I got I got a, a three hour book was offered a three hour book that was royalty share plus, which means you get the share and but you also get paid a small fee per hour, and it was about robotics in the workplace, some kind of like textbook mm. kind of thing yeah so i got the audition and he said yeah i love the audition really want you to do the book whatever royalty share plus so i said to him look here's the deal royalty share plus i charge 50 dollars per finished hour for the royalty share plus so so 50 dollars plus the royalty and uh, i'll do the first hour you'll pay me 50 dollars. i'll do halfway you'll pay me the halfway fee and then i'll finish the book and like within a day I got a thing saying, unfortunately, you have not been selected to do this book. So, right, right that was a scam. It was. Yeah. It was. Sounds that was like a scam. It. I don't know how what the scam was. The scam, the scam might be as simple as they get your bank account details. I don't know. I don't know. Well, uh, they just they... want to be able to get out of it without paying. Because about 10 years ago, I, I wrote a whole book and didn't get paid. 
did they did they put it out did they sell it how did they get out of the deal no well it was it was and i it was partly my stu own stupidity and the, and i had i'd found an agent on the internet and i'd used I, this is what my second book i've written i've written i've published three books i've written four there was a problem with the fourth one and it never got released but um first one was, was fine did that with a proper professional publishers and they were really good i had a decent agent was a friend of my aunt's book number two um which is called the frugal life book number one was called bedroom dj actually it was called bedroom um, dj so what bedroom was that about? dj it was about me trying to learn to dj and i interviewed djs some right. in person some on that the sounds phone. like a good yeah book. it was really good fun it was good fun it was really good fun um oh yeah i was really lucky with that and that was sort of back in the day when people actually paid you a reasonable commission to write something nowadays you're lucky if people pay you to write and write you know and is it the same deal plus. is there is there a royalty share deal and a and a price per book deal as well different deals like that the way it works is you get you usually get a commission up front which used to be a few grand right. so if you were if you were established writer you might get I don't know if you're really famous you might get half a million to write right. a book yeah but JK then, Rowling, I mean yeah. yeah exactly or more um you know uh celebrities celebrities get paid a lot but I got I think well, I got four grand to write this book That's and they right. do it in yeah it was good it was good I mean if you look at the number of words you know from a journalistic point of view it's it's, it's not great but it was really good it was good fun they pay it in tranches so you get the first bit when you sign the, the contract yeah. then you get um, a third of it when you submit the book and then you get the rest of it when it's published and plus you get royalties yeah. but that's only if you sell more than the book run which my okay. one sadly didn't okay uh, there was another big book at Still, the time you get that came four out. grand I was really good. I was able to buy a, buy a bit, like some of it was a down payment on my flat, my first yeah. flat. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But then um, a few years later, I, I was doing a blog called The Frugal Life for MSN, and I thought I've got so much material, I could do another book. Couldn't get hold of my old agent, who'd sort of lost interest anyway. Um, I found this bloke on the internet. I won't mention his name, but he turned out to be it. And somebody recommended and said, "Yeah, he's really good." Um, the only deal he could get me. Because he did, on, to be fair to him, he contacted a lot of uh, publishers. But at the time, it was a credit crunch. There were loads of people writing books about saving money and more famous people. See, I'm, I'm not. Um, and the only people we could get were these really shady publishers who'd, shade, who'd published, you know, things like Jade Goody's diaries and 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 books about gangsters and just stuff about the craze and not even like the craze but kind of you know d-list gangsters and just and I, I didn't like them particularly I didn't really want my book to be coming out with them but he's like well this is the only deal that's on the table the money was terrible and he said and you've got to write it in a month and normally you'd get six months to write a book you know unless it's you know something in that like i don't know autobiography or something that you've got to bash out but luckily i've never done those anyway so i worked my bottom off to get this damn thing written sent it off and the thing we hadn't even we hadn't got the contract through from them and i kept bugging him and saying i shouldn't be writing this because we haven't got the contract so i said don't worry about that just get on with it and then of course they reneged on it and pulled out of the deal entirely but actually um, it worked out well, not financially, um, but I then found my husband. I tried everybody to try and get this book published and no one was interested. But I found these lovely people through my husband. Um, he found a gardening catalogue and there were these lovely people called the Good Life Press. And um, they were up north somewhere and they were just lovely. And it was very little money. Um, I think it was, like, it was 500 quid or something like that as, as an upfront payment. But I did get some royalties and they were just decent people and they were actually interested in it. And it just, you know, it was much better that way around. But yeah, I, I quickly realized that writing books was not going to be any kind of a money spinner. Yeah. That. Well, I, I went into this, I went into this believing, you know, that everything on there was, and it's not, there's, there's, no. there's all sorts of traps and, and this, I'm worried about this, this, Fodnap map one because I did one 
because I knocked back a hydroponics one. They sent me a script for a hydroponics book and it was full of spelling mistakes and bad grammar and whatever. And I couldn't get hold of the rights holder to. Uh, and so in the end, I said, no, I'm not doing this. And I've knocked it back. And this this diet one, the fact that there's been something tricky at the beginning. Oh, no, you know, audition for one book and get given another one. And I'm looking at the manuscript and it's clearly been scanned off something and the photographs of the food are in there well why the hell do i need that and a lot of the time the the, the fonts are all messed up so that it'll it'll go like it'll have ingredients and it'll and then it'll have per serving it'll have like this much carbohydrate and this many milligrams of sodium and then it'll say chocolate chip cookies and and oh no that's supposed to be the heading of the next bit but it's still in the line with the ingredients of the last recipe and so i'm really i really just want to get that i do like about 20 minutes to half an hour's worth every day on it because i think it's about yeah. eight hours long uh just to get it done and when i put it in i'm just expecting it to disappear and i've also watched uh some videos of some voiceover people do like youtube channels and working with acx and i've noticed some of the comments they get and somebody somebody said i once did a diet book and they didn't put it out and i did all this however many hours work for nothing and i'm thinking geez i'm doing a diet book there's already a red flag with it so mm -hmm. hey if it turns out to be but that's the last of the pure royalty share things I've yeah. got hanging over. for Because I just took the royalty share ones because they were easy to get. I mean, I told you, every three auditions, I got one. It's, yeah, yeah. They're, they're the bottom of the barrel because they take the longest to pay off. I mean, like I said, I've been doing them since March and I won't get anything until the end of this month. And I don't know how much I'll get. It depends how many the four books I've got up have been selling. So, yeah, it's it's been a journey and it's been takes a long time because I, I, I get up at seven and I, I come in here and unless I've got something else on like today I've got this yeah. and I've, tomorrow I've got the hospital if I've got a day where I've got nothing else on I'll be in here at seven and I won't get out till like nine o'clock at night and I'll go to bed oh and all God. I'll do is work on these damn books oh, Graham, that's or, not healthy. or audition for other ones or you know because I'm always hustling looking for the next the next big one because the you know this is yeah. my only sort apart from the little bit i get paid to do the weekly show on podcast radio which isn't Ooh, much yeah. apart yeah. from that this is really the only source of income and i've got to get it yeah. up there to at least a level where it pays the mortgage and at the moment it's not yeah, yeah. so i've got to and i've got to get that up to speed so yeah. i'm just bashing it out there and then just to see how I go, well, but good for you, the, the, you're the a time, good after the time, the time travel one. I've done the 15 minutes, and when you do the 15 minutes, I just do the first chapter and then take the first 15 minutes off and send them that, and they go. And as it was, a couple of the characters he didn't like, he wanted to change the the female character, the guy's wife in it, and which I've changed, whatever. And yesterday he messaged and said he loves it, and he loves that character, and he loves the airport security guy I did, and whatever. But so I've done the first chapter and the first chapter is just under half an hour. So today, if I do one or two chapters, two, two chapters maximum, it means yeah. I will have got over that first hour. And at least I can say to him, stick a hundred dollars in my bank. And at least I can say yeah. today I made a hundred dollars. And then if he yeah. does that today and tomorrow I can do the first half of the book. So I can get myself like another 300 tomorrow. So I could make a hundred dollars today, another 300 tomorrow, and then possibly another 300 the next day by finishing it. Um, but it just depends how long it takes for him to get back to me. But in the meantime, if I can, I've been, there's a guy who really likes some work I've done. It's an 11 hour book. And in yeah. some ways it's similar to Tom's book because it is a guy's personal story, but they're more anecdotes, yeah. but I have to sound like him. And he loves what I've done on the audition. So it just depends on whether he's doing royalty share plus. I've already said to him, look, I want $50 an hour. If he says he'll pay $50 an hour for royalty share plus, I can then, while I'm waiting for the time leap guy to approve the bits from the day before, I can then work on his one. And, and what I yeah. want to do is if I can get three overlapping like that, I can make, then get into like a routine of making literally a hundred and hundred over a hundred to hundred to three hundred dollars a day, every day. And if I yeah. do that for a little while, I can give myself a day off and go like, yeah. you know, we've done all right now. We'll get, you know, yeah. each month I can do that. But as it is, I'm just head down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't blame you. <laughs> Leave the Cardiff. Well, meanwhile, um, people have been very busy 
working on writing and drawing at the moment. That's but, quite um, the. I'm so a, he's, he's he's into marketing. Look at this. He's uh he's doing labels. So so what is the drink? I'm a I'm a bit. It, it, it's it's uh it's Chianti. <laughs> right. So it's I came what? down this morning. Yeah. Well, the, I came down this morning, and and the thing is, um, Stellan finished his nursery this morning, um, because they've the way it's school schools working, they've they've split the classes and things. So he does Monday, Tuesday mornings, um, and we were giving. Uh, I said, well, we'll get. Uh, we've got a couple of bottles of prosecco for the teachers, and also there's a lovely lollipop man called Jerry Jerry King in our village who helps all the children across the road, and and uh, you know old mums like such as myself across the road and he's lovely and I have a chat with him every morning but I got him a bottle of wine because Jerry likes a bottle of red wine and this morning I came down and Squirrel had got um, as we call him Stellan had got this fruit shoot bottle from the we went to the local pub for lunch yesterday outside in the garden and he decided he'd been carelessly copying the label off the wine bottle <laughs> and then stuck it on here and even doug had to do a, a little barcode on oh the back. brilliant yeah and has he spelt it correctly he has actually yeah wow yeah i know but um i'm a bit i'm a little bit concerned because of the alcoholic connotation <laughs> yeah uh, what are you concerned? A little inappropriate, perhaps, uh, for a four and a half year old. Are you concerned that the four and a half year old is associated with alcohol, or are you concerned on how it reflects on you as a mother? It's, and, it's and yes, maybe, it's probably more that. Maybe even suggests a re an unhealthy relationship with alcohol, um, <laughs> and, uh, and you know verges on the um do we contact social service well it does doesn't it, it is does. that is that your concern oh uh, well, yes especially as it was you know all this happened before half past seven in the morning so um yeah it's not healthy is it but right. he's been he's suddenly there's suddenly been this sort of explosion of, of drawing and um well you and, showed uh, me writing. one on, on whatsapp he, he did a yes. drawing of me on the toilet and, and i can't I can't work out his inspiration for that, considering he's never met me. It, has he has he seen that I work out of a wardrobe? Did he think I like small spaces? <laughs> the solitude and the magic of the moment. Is, is I'm that... going to see if I can find the picture if you like. Yeah. Should I do that? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, this is a this is a concern that of all the things I've done, and he's heard me on the radio and that, his image of me is me sitting on the toilet. Ah, uh, you know, I do use, have been known to use toilet humor on the radio. Here we are. Okay. Here you go, toilet humor, yes. Yeah. Um, yes, so, uh, so he talks about you quite a lot. Oh, really? Um, you've been, yeah, you have been added to the Alexa shopping list at least three times by him. Okay. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, for some, so he was helping me ed edit the podcast actually. Right. I was a little bit kind of concerned, but you know, um, he did sort of li enjoy listening to little clips that I've, I've made of, of our chats and things. And then, yeah, suddenly he decided. So, um, so we've got some numbers up here, and that is, that was sort of the the out or whatever that I said. So, well, we need to cut cut it here. So he oh, I see. The, right. The okay. Yeah, obviously um, cutting out some of my bit, not your bit. Oh, of course, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> oh no, you know, if you've got any funny lines, I cut those out. <laughs> yeah, um, of course. Make me sound well, lower better. the tone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's your podcast, after all. It's my podcast. <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Could it make me look good? And then, yeah, for some reason, yeah, this is this is you. This is Graham on the toilet here. Just move and it then... to your right a touch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this oh, you, there's you on the toilet. Right. And I'd assumed that this was you in your in your flat, but no. Then I was informed that um, this. I said, "What is that?" And he said, "Well, that's the ladder. We've got this sort of, you know, those ladder bookcases that were popular a couple yeah. of years ago. We've yeah. got one of those in our bathroom. Right. So it's that." Um, and I said, "Well," and he said, "Oh, that's the light." And and um, and I said, "So, but what you're saying is Graham is actually." in the in the, is is in is in our toilet and he said it's all right it was before lockdown mummy um yeah and i thought this was a birthday cake but actually this is these are the toothbrushes and this is the sink and that's the floor 
But, but I, I don't get why why his image of me is on the toilet. I don't know, but he <laughs> he's four and a half, and four and a half years are obsessed with poo. Okay. Poo right. and wee and yeah and other you know bodily functions basically. So there you go. All right. Well, tell him it, it's a it, it's it, it's nice to be it's nice to be mentioned. In is, in artwork, in yes. artwork, to be the subject light. of artwork, and if he becomes a famous artist, <laughs> I can say I was his muse, exactly. <laughs> sitting on the toilet. <laughs> sitting on the toilet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I'm just relieved it's not me. So <laughs> as it would usually be. Oh yeah. Um, bit of a bit of a worry though. So the toilet and booze. They, well, they go together. <sighs> That's true, they do, don't they? There's also, I, I didn't get them, but there's lots of, for obvious reasons, but there's lots of pictures of mummy with the word fart above my head as well. Right. Because mm, he was playing some sort of game of um, drawing lots of faces of, of me and Doug and the dog and him, and then you had to guess who had farted, and each time it was me. So I probably got off lightly, just sat on the toilet. It could have I been think much you did. worse. Yeah, it could have been a lot. It could have been a lot more detail in that picture. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, there so what are you up to going forward then? What's what's the week hold? <sighs> um, well, I'm in the middle of um, I'm in the middle of making a mess of my new website at the moment. Actually, <laughs> making a mess of it. It was going nicely. So we're, um, what we're doing is. Um, uh, redesigning happening in hearts so it is a, a business di directory it has yeah. a it's got a blog but it, it has a business directory function so that people can have we can have premium listings we can have basic listings for free yeah. and people can input companies can put their own on there as well yeah um so i'm kind of halfway through the build well i say this every week but you know i've been working on it for about a month it's just me and wordpress at the moment um and my lovely friend ali lawrence is helping run the the, the existing website and the facebook page at the moment um and yeah i decided that i liked i really like the the business directory theme that I, I bought but that i didn't like the blog so i found a way that you could install a second wordpress theme on there so that it looks different looks more professional more like a, a magazine or kind of newspaper website and is this theme. the paid wordpress version uh, this is a this is a paid theme, yeah. Because pay, I do a blog on WordPress. Yeah, oh, it's yours and, on WordPress. Yeah, but it's the free version, and yeah. they just changed it now. So it's it's a little you just just have to learn the the new ways. But everyone tells me you, WordPress can make websites, but I don't. That's I don't know because I my website I did with um, with Google, whatever they call it. It's free. Google. Um, yeah. Because I've got Google Chrome and I use Google Drive. There's oh, a right. Google website builder thing. Oh, really? I've, and if, have you checked my website, Graham? I have looked at yours. Yeah, yeah. I we did all that myself. Julie didn't do any. Yeah. It didn't help me. I, I no. sat down one, it was like one Saturday afternoon and just put it all yeah. together. It didn't take that long, and it was just really strange for me. A little bit of swearing. But, um, <laughs> and it's really easy to keep, I can keep it up to date. So when I've got new videos or, or, or stuff, I can, I can put them up. Um, yeah. Um, and That's I good. found that, I found that really easy. So I don't know if that helps, but if you've already started with WordPress, you should probably stay with WordPress. Well, we, as you see, the existing site is with one, two, three, and I pick, and it's, it's much simpler because it's just a blog. Yeah. But then we got um, people started asking for, for during the lockdown for listings of, of which takeaways were operating, which pubs were operating, operating takeaway. And then we've just ended up with hundreds of listings, but they are just a name and a phone number and a link. Mm. Um, whereas we, we thought we would want something that looks a bit prettier um, and that you can properly search and, and WordPress is I've used before is, is just can do and it can just got a lot more functionality you can just do. but you can have a I mean you can I've had free blogs on WordPress before and it's great but yeah I've installed a new theme in the blog and then I've I've basically buggered up the rest of the site because <laughs> it has turned to that and I'm hoping that once I I fix my blog page and I turn it off so that it's just that that theme appears on that look appears on that page yeah. that it will be sorted but um yeah I'm, I'm kind of a bit, a bit worried 
having it's... having my experience of setting up my website and seeing how easy it turned out to be because i was gonna go with uh julie wanted me to go with um we looked at a load of them that you paid for and yeah. i said but and i ended up because we, we looked at squarespace and all oh, the yeah. ones go Merlo. daddy go da Wix. we looked at all all of the different ones yeah and i said let me just have a bash on the free google one first and see if i can do it for free and before i know it i've done it and i said oh this will do and it looks fine yeah. but having having seen how to do it and how it's free I'm still shocked at how many small operations don't have a website. They'll have a Facebook yeah. page, but like a yeah. restaurant, you know, a local restaurant, mm. a curry house or something, doesn't have a, a website. And you're like, how? <laughs> Why? Surely no, that's... I have come quite because I've been spending. I spend a lot of time looking up restaurants and and checking them and adding them because we, we, the moment we sort of started off with just where and and Hartford and Hoddleston and now we've got some listings from St Albans and Wellin and, and from kind of moving across out across Hertfordshire but yeah there are so you do occasionally come across restaurants who don't have a website or it's really rubbishy and you yeah, think it's, it's really 90s yeah it's really 90s it's, it's got think, like a stripped down one any favors. <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, there are lots of really. I mean, usually you end up find it by for you, you find it by searching on Ask Jeeves. Yeah. Really Ask Jeeves. God, that takes me back. Yeah. Or God, my mum. I remember we we heard about Google first. My mum used to say it was Goggly Eye. Have you looked that up on Goggly Eye? What? <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, yeah. No, mate, I, goggly Eye makes more sense because you're looking for something. Yeah. Exactly. Because exactly. I always thought eBay had the wrong name. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's not a bay. Why isn't no. it called eBid? It's a bloody auction e site. You got so close. Yeah, it, should it should be called yeah. eBid. Unless eBid was taken and they went with eBay. But... It might have been why. Well, they sounded, thought it sounded like Enid. But I mean, people call it <laughs> Flea Bay, don't they? They call it Flea yeah. Bay. <laughs> well, I call what's it? Um, what's the one I had an issue with when they put my house from for, for, for my put my flat for rent on it what was that yeah, yeah. yeah. mug tree yeah mug tree gum yeah. tree yeah, yeah mug tree the mugs. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i call fa facebook a face ache yeah i call it face ache as well do you yeah but i've but told I'm, you i told you what i yeah. wanted and there's two things i want to do is first of all i want to have a social me an anti-social media website Yes. Where you can put lists of people on there that you don't want to bug you <laughs> and call it get out of my Facebook. <laughs> and the other one I want to do is combine YouTube. Let's see which ones I would combine. YouTube, Spotify, Twitter, and Facebook. I want to combine them into one giant time-wasting website called You Spotty Twitface. <laughs> Sounds ideal for teenagers as <laughs> well. Teenage market. Yeah. 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 Now, I, I'm worried about you, Graham. I think you need to get out and get some vitamin D, although looking I at might the window, do, but I'm not sure right they're quite now my, my focus is bringing in money. Yeah, yeah. That's I know, what I, I need to do. That. And yeah. um, that's, what, that's what I'm going to continue to to crack yeah. on at because yeah. once i get this if i can get this into a flow where i'm auditioning for enough to have three or four maybe going on all the time and overlap and get regular smaller paychecks instead of doing a load of work and then praying that they're going to pay me the wad because you don't know because yeah, after that first that first hour sorts them out if they don't pay you the first hour they're not going to pay the whole thing so then no. you've only put an hour in or you've only got an hour on it and that's it hey okay cut my losses the scam filter worked um that's i think that's the way to go and then at the halfway point you know whether they've actually got any more money because that's going to be three times around about three or four times what the first hour was when you've got that then you know oh yeah they probably are going to pay for the whole thing that's the only way to go see i'm, I'm surprised that's not the i mean i came up with that i'm surprised that's not the standard practice for how it works because how would you know because a lot of there's not there's not just crooks on there because there are crooks on there yeah there's a lot of people who are just idiots who think oh yeah i'll get them to do the book and then they think, oh no i'm getting money or no can you wait for um? and i'm like you yeah. were just you know just idiots 
There's that as well. Yeah. You, and you've got to filter them out. Yeah. So they're, they're just innocent idiots, but still you don't get paid. It's the same result. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it's yeah. just what i got to do. Well, I wrote my book number four. I, I was about uh, running a greener business. And I wrote that about what, five or six years ago. And then um, fell out with the publisher because he didn't publish it. He, he, was, he, he didn't publish it for six months. And then I kind of missed the boat because there's rules about, you know, you can complain and then try and get out of the contract and go to somebody else. But because I didn't, um, because there's a lot of other stuff going on in my life at the time, uh, then I kind of, it's, it's as though you've been complicit with, you're happy with them delaying. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I, th I think he wants, he said, oh, we'll, pub we'll, ru we'll rush it out and we'll get a work experience person to check. Because the thing with, you know, regulations and things with environment the environment they change quite a lot yeah, you know? yeah. so because it it sat on this book for uh, six months to a year um a lot of the things were out of date and i was a bit worried and there was lots of interviews and things um that needed checking again yeah i was going to get a work experience person to check it because i didn't have the time to and i wouldn't agree to it and then the thing never never got published Bloody hell. i know but luckily i've got out of the contract but i mean i've got i've got this book that i spent hours you know months you, on the, now the, the one you ended up with the nice mob up north that's not that one this is a different one no this is a, a quite a you know a decent supposedly decent publisher in london but he's quite he's he's quite bonkers he's quite uh, that's the thing because they're all mad you either got um you know big companies or then kind of middle-sized i mean i've never i'm what they call them i mean i'm not i don't I haven't written any books for years but i was always sort of a mid, what they call a mid list which is sort of unsuccessful you know, you're not the Stephen Fry's and then and, and the J.K. Rowling's and, and the rest of it, but you're kind of plugging away. Um, you, you tend to be working with, with smaller outfits and then they, you know, they're not always that um, that good because they're just run by one person who's got lots of different projects on the go and then they're just sort of, you know, interested in what it was across their desk at the time. But <laughs> And then, yeah, you get stuck into a contract and you can't get out of it. And I think I got some of the money, but not all of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, my people say, why didn't you write another book, Piper? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what for? So I can go and waste my time. I'm busy wasting, wasting my time um, with my website at the moment. But I've got to get that finished so that I can actually do some paid work and then try and actually get money out of people. <laughs> the yeah. listings on the site. That's the yeah, idea. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, so you're actually praying for a second wave. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> No, no, definitely not. Because no, no, people I don't need know. the info and stuff. And what's well, they will, what's but now, I don't, you know? I don't want to if finish If everything back to normal, you know, supply and demand. No, but I know? need these businesses to keep going so that they can pay, you know, nine, nine, nine ninety nine right. a month for a, a premium listing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, oh, you know, it's all experiment. We'll see if it works or not, but. All right, anyway, well, uh, well that, that, that was fun. I better oh, let you good. get on and do the website. That was really uh, good fun. And I'll get this up on uh, YouTube, and people can find about all of, find out all about uh, toilet artwork. <laughs> um, it's, the, it's the next big thing. Next big thing is the toilet art. <laughs> Maybe it's a phase. You know, like uh, was it which one went through his blue period? Was it Picasso or one of them? Picasso, or, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, and then yeah. you had the cubists. You, you, yeah. you might be a cubicalist. Cubicalist. So, <laughs> I like that. That's good. <laughs> You should write a book. <laughs> oh, no, I've, I've heard writing a book's a nightmare. It's worse than oh, trying yeah, to write some. Yeah. No. Piper, thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. See you later, Graham. <laughs> bye. And take care. Love to Julie. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Love to Doug. <laughs>